How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today, I'm going to go over seven practical tips that you can use while driving so that you can minimize your chances of getting a ticket. I can just tell you to follow all traffic rules, but a lot of times this is not practical and not what people do in real life. Some people, even if they follow all traffic rules, somehow they manage to still get a ticket for some reason. Watch the rest of this video to see what practical tips I have for you. The first one is 74 miles per hour. This is a very special number because most of the highways here are 65 miles an hour and we know that nobody ever drives at 65 miles an hour if there's no traffic. Why do I say 74? Because this is at the edge of at which you can get a ticket. It's the fastest you can go. And yes, you can still get a ticket at 74. Technically, you can get a ticket at 66 miles per hour. I say 74 because when you go at 74 mile an hour on the carpool lane or on the fastest lane, you're most likely going with traffic. If you go a little bit above that, you'll notice that you start to go a little bit faster than everyone else. Go in second place all the time, really. If there's someone else a little bit faster than you, the policeman is gonna catch the faster person and not you. So uh, generally I see 74 miles an hour work really well and I have never gotten a ticket at 74 miles an hour surprisingly. I have gotten speeding tickets so my methods here sometimes I don't even follow it. Some roads are exact. For example around here if you're in Alameda, 25 mile an hour is the speed limit and they will catch you for going over at 26 miles per hour. So you really got to look at most freeways you can do this okay. But some counties, they're really, really strict. If you go one mile over, then they would catch you. So it's kind of good to know which area you're driving in and if they're prone to catching people, that's just one mile an hour over. The next practical tip is the color of your car. Now you can't exactly choose the color of your car, but if you're about to buy a car, it's kind of good to know these statistics. This data here, I just found it online. It's a composition of two million tickets in the state of Ohio. Here are the four most ticketed cars of that state. You can imagine if you have a lot of cars that are a certain color, of course it's going to get ticketed more. The trick here is to figure out if that car gets ticketed more often than a random ticketed car. If every single car gets ticketed evenly, then here is the percentage of all cars that are that color. Then that would mean that gray color would get ticketed 6% of the time, the red one, it would get ticketed 14% of the time and so on. However, here are the percentage of tickets that actually were given for that kind of car. It's actually 10%. You have 6% in the road somewhere, but somehow it's get ticketed 10%. That means if you just randomly drive a car with a certain color, if it's gray, you're going to get an elevated chance of getting ticketed. A red car comes in at 1.14, slightly more than a random chance of a red car. If you drive a white car, it's actually a little bit less at 0.76. And silver is a little bit lower at half the chance of the number of cars on the road. Of course, white is the most ticketed car. You don't look at it that way. There are a lot of white cars there. So the chance of that is this ratio. Therefore, it's good to keep in mind that if you have a high ratioed car of getting ticketed, it's a little bit better to watch out and be extra careful to offset this higher chance of getting a ticket. The next set of stuff is what I call nitpicky stuff. If there's something wrong that gives the police a reason to stop you, they will. The number one thing is registration. You can see that registration sticker is a different color and they can see this from really far away. And I've had policemen stop me for having a different month. It was just off by like a few days and they stopped me for that. Tail lights needs to all work. So if you have a friend that tells you your light is broken, go and fix it right away. Sometimes it's good to have a cache of uh, those light bulbs ready in hand in your garage so that you can put them in right away. Loud exhaust and modified cars. A lot of younger people like to modify their cars and this is just like a beacon of come stop me. So for my car, I like to not do any modifications. I just leave it stock and it's great the way it is and I don't get stopped all that often. Front tinted windows in the driver's side and the passenger side are not allowed in California. So if you have tinted windows, they're more likely going to stop you. If you have tinted windows maybe in the back, you're still going to be more likely to be stopped. It's kind of like the modified car thing, loud exhaust. You, if you put things black, they cannot see you. And so that kind of feels like a reason to stop you. 
It's good to know where the policeman hides along your commute, mainly because your commute, you're going to do this over and over again, therefore increasing your chances of get, getting a ticket. There are websites that aggregates this information, or you can just get this from your coworkers that drives in along the same route. The fifth tip to not get a ticket is to not weave in out and not tailgate. Most likely, you're gonna do this kind of stuff when you're in a hurry. So you really should refrain yourself from going in and out of a lane because that's just a beacon of saying, stop me, you know, because you're going in and out. And it's really obvious for someone that's, you know, like a couple cars back and you're just going in and out. It's really easy to see you and the police is gonna come and stop you. Tailgating is a little bit harder to see compared to weaving in and out, but they can just as well see this if you're closer up to you. The sixth tip is kind of for a car that I was in where the person driving actually followed a police that had their lights on. Well, it's a stupid move. They're going really fast, they had their lights on, and somehow they decided to follow them, maybe because they think they can go faster or something. Don't follow the police. Um, it's a terrible idea. They're gonna stop and then, and then come and stop you instead of going to wherever they need to go. The other point is to respect them and not pretend they're not there. Once you notice them, it's okay to react as if you know they're there, of course. You respect them, you see them there. If you're on the highway and you were going 70, it's okay to slow down to 65. But don't jam on the brakes to slow down to 65. You can just let off the gas and let it trickle down to 65. If you're on any kind of road that has a lower speed limit, slow down to the exact speed limit. It's okay. Even if they're behind you, they're not gonna try to stop you just because you're going at the speed limit. Sometimes they might be tailgating you because they need to go somewhere fast, but refrain from driving faster just because they're pushing up against you because you can still get a ticket for going over the speed limit even if they're tailgating you. The last thing is always stop at a stop sign. Some people make it a habit of just kind of rolling through. For me, I always, always stop at a stop sign. Even if there's no police, even if there's nobody around, I still stop at least one second. Practically, I'm stopping at one second, but don't let this be a recommendation because I cannot legally recommend people to stop at only one second. This is just what I do. You do what you do, and the official recommendation is three seconds, okay? And definitely, if there's police present, you should stop for three seconds. This is after the wheel stops, you go, uh, and then you stop, you go one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, then you go. So it's kind of like whenever you see the policeman, you do everything to the word of the law, even if it's impractical. And practically every single day when I see people stop, they stop for one second. They don't stop for three seconds. This is, this is real life. Real life is one second. Real life is also 74 miles an hour on the freeway. One thing I forgot to mention is blue headlights. If you have blue headlights, they kind of draw attention as well. I hope these practical tips helps you not get a speeding ticket for many years in the future to come. Don't forget to give me a like on this video, comment down below, let me know if you have other tips to avoid speeding tickets. If you're interested in supporting this channel, don't forget to check out my Audible link down in the video description below. And also you can help support this channel directly if you like through my Patreon link over here. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.